Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. It's the Dragonfly Gamer UK, and we are back in Station Ears. In our previous episode, we uh, talked about setting up um, a more pleasant environment to work in. So basically, I wanted to pressurise all of this, um, all of this, all of this, all of this, all the way up here. And uh, I've been working to that effect offline. So what I've done to begin with is I have built a little corridor here. There's no door in there yet because I'm sealed off the room behind there yet. Um, so this will become an airlock with a big um, pump in here rather than a little vent. It'll have a, a big vent in here. These doors, oops, these doors will need to be replaced because these are just interior doors. Um, I have also, as you can see here, sealed off the room that um, Amy goes into. All the doors are open because nothing's um, pressurised yet. It's the point in having the doors closed. So, yeah, Amy's now got her own little room with access to the environment and everything else on this side will be pressurised with a little airlock there. Um, I have also as I explained last time, push this out. I have installed two blast doors. Now the thing with blast doors is there's no buttons to open them. Um, you've got to do it electronically or with a crowbar. Like so. There's a blast door there, blast door on the other side. Um, I will wire these up. Let's close off for now. Um, as you see I've left the um, power connections disconnected so I can actually open them with a crowbar. Because if you attach that, you can't actually open them with a crowbar. Um, I've also put a door here. The reason being, all this is now enclosed up here. Again, this bit isn't pressurised yet. Um, it will be pressurised eventually. I'll make sure everything's sealed. And if I go here, you can see there's a wall here. Because everything, the other side of here, is pressurised. So, let's go down at our little greenhouse area. It's taken quite a bit of work to do all this. And in our little greenhouse we now have a ceiling of two blocks high. Rather than just a one block high. It just makes it feel a bit more spacious. Except for this bit over here, which I won't be bothered about. Um, I've got space here now so I can set up Harveys and things. Harveys? Larry's? Whatever they're called. <laughs> the fruit pickers. <laughs> um, so that's giving me a load of space for doing that. I still haven't set anything up here to um, just keep an eye on my power system. Um, I will be doing that as well. So yes, yeah, so all this this is pressurised. And the reason I did this bit first is because obviously again I've pretty much just uh, increased the volume by a good third, if not more. Um, so I had to press, you know, get the gas up there before I took the floor out. I had to uh, pressurise that area. I did it with nitrogen, just load nitrogen in there. Um, night rice, drop a load of night rice in there, let, let it evaporate. Uh, the pressure was up to around about 80 kilopascals, and then I, I broke through. And obviously, you've got to be careful because that again a large volume of gas which needed to be heated up to match the uh, temperature in this room. And I just did it by uh, removing a, a panel and slowly letting the glass bleed, gas bleed through, uh, making sure that my um, air conditioner was running um, and that all happened that's all been done so it, it took a while but it's you know it's eventually now equalized at 30 degrees which is what we need for the cocoa and um, so they hopefully they they are happy let's just double check where's my other pad what have I done with my other pad? oh there it is I would do if the battery wasn't flat um, What's left it on? Okay. Now let's just check everything's happy. Uh, the wheat and things are grown too, they must be happy. Um, growth efficiency 56, 56. Yeah. Um, breathing, temperature at all okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Light efficiency is probably the issue. I'm going to have to put another grow light in, I think. Um, Calm dioxide. 
requires at least 1%, currently 11.5, and pollutants, uh, maximum 993 pascals, and it's currently zero. However, what I do have in here, and which I want to clear it, let me just put that back in my cupboard over here. Um, what I did notice is I've got quite a bit of um, nitrous oxide laughing gas um, in this room. So that's 4.32% and I need to get rid of that. So I printed a small filter and I'll replace that one. And stick you in there for now. Oh, I had one there, look. Didn't even know that. Make sure you're on and you're running. Um, I could probably do with a proper filtration system using one of these, but this does me fun out, to be honest. There we go, the, nitri uh, the nitrous oxide is dropping. And the sun is coming up. Okay, so that's all that. So actually, that's not bad power wires. I've got three small batteries of blue, my big batteries of orange, and the sun is just coming up. And I haven't put any um, coal in that in a while, so it's all from the sun. So yeah, so all this is done. All right, let me just while I'm here, get a shower, a bath, because uh, he's complaining. Oh, um, damage to my suit. Now, I don't know if you noticed in my last session, I'd actually replaced my suit and all the damage had gone. Yeah. Amy attacked me. <laughs> when I say Amy attacked me, what I mean is um, I was setting it going and... Oh, get a shower quickly. What's making that noise? Um, I was setting a go and then she lifted her like drilling head. Oh, it's you because I put a load of water in here. My light just gone out. Yes, my light's gone out. No, oh, I'm not going to have my suit on. Whoa. <laughs> that's stupid. Um, that's why I can't hear it normally, because I've got the suit on. Yes, yeah, so Amy attacked me, uh, damaged my suit. I had to quickly grab some tape. Thankfully, it was in the storage cupboard right beside me. That will turn off eventually. It'll all uh, equalise out how much water we've got in there. 36. Again, I'm being cautious about how quickly I load this with... Uh, new material because I don't want to plunge the temperature of the water down and damage my cocoa plants so I'm just doing it a bit at a time as you can see the temperature is dropping because we're creating or bringing new water into the system that's at a lot much colder temperature I think it's about minus 20 something like that um, so overall cools down the liquid in the system so that'll just then heat it back up again Wow, I've got through that quick. Alright, I'll give you another one. Yeah, about 40 again. That's fine. So I've got everything on me. Let me just close that. Um, helmets. It's already closed. What are we doing food-wise? While we're in here, let's just grab some food and water. Oh, that's that tin gone. Uh, which one's not got a full amount in it? I'm sure there's one of these partially consumed. That one. Yeah, there we go. And the tin can go in there. For storage. Water. And somebody. <laughs> So as a new player I've been asking me questions about the game and they're saying does this make you want to go to the loo and my answer is yes it's the, it just sounds like you take a little wee <laughs> so yes it does make me want to go to the loo when you're listening to that you can get rounded by holding you can get rounded by holding down the right alt key sorry the left alt key and clicking on it and it just instantly fills your water bar um, what else have I done? 
as part of expanding this I had some um, vents outside the base up here I've had to move them onto the roof so you can see them there now and obviously I had to rename them and reprogram this chip just to make sure that it um, picks up those vents again so yeah so far that's what I've done down here um, Oh, close, close, close. I haven't programmed my helmet yet to automatically close. Um, I've been printing a lot of stuff. Obviously, it's just taking a lot of walls and one thing or another. Um, so, let's go upstairs. So, there's no change down here. Uh, what I did do is I got rid of that door down there, like I said I was going to. And just put some fancy ceiling in here, just keep it nice and bright in here. Uh, no change down here. You can go off. You dump what I put into you. Yeah, my... Um, the centrifuge is still going well. Best thing ever that. Um, so let, let's go to here. That's probably the easiest way. Oh no, you can't see from me. So uh, previously I mentioned there was this cable here. You can see the bit of the cable here. It was coming down here. Uh, and I said I wanted to move out of the way because it's annoying me being in the middle. So I disconnected it and re re rerouted it. So it goes down in that corner now. What I didn't realise at the time was it was split three ways. So it came down, went that way towards my base and this way towards the vending machine over there and all of my um, storage units behind here. And I missed this connection and I literally dismantled all of this. <laughs> and then most of this before I realised where the fault was. Now... What I should have done is got another chip, centre chip, for my glasses. And apparently, as well, there's one of the chips will show you where all your cables and things are. So uh, I'll go and explore that in a minute. But uh, let's just carry on expanding and uh, show you what we've done. So I have put a lot of walls in here up here. So walls here, here. This will be an airlock here. Do I need an airlock there? No, I don't need an airlock there. This can just be one big room um, I put walls around there walls around my um, landing pad control unit so I can still get to it um, I walled off my um, communications dish but again I can still get to the buttons and things just um, my lift is already encased uh, obviously around here as well and all these will eventually get sealed in um, this will be the airlock onto my launch pad so just here this way I'm going to put the, the uh, airlock. Um, what I have installed is a refrigerated vending machine. So let's get that over there. So it's just a test. So the advantage of the refrigerated with the vending machine is it can actually put frozen items in it. Uh, ices. And it won't melt. So it will take normal items. Normal ores. Um, and other things. So just stick that in there. And uh, it just works the same as a normal vending machine. I can just vend them out. Yeah, and same with that. But have I got any ice? Uh, let's go get some water. Probably is not the best time of day to do this. I should have kept one of those waters on me. I could chill this room down. Maybe, maybe not. Um, how is it? 48. Okay, so I managed to save. Just lose two. So we have ice on us. I'm going to put this chute round to here so I can feed things in from inside the pressurised zone because that's all going to be pressurised. Um, so just stick the water ice in here. So now if we go and look, we have... If I go onto there, it is, uh, that's 50 coal. That's 48 water ice. So we've got 48 water ice there. Now I can just vend that out. Oh well, I didn't realize that. You can actually change the stack size. Okay, um, I can just vend that out. Or what I can do, because it's in this vending machine, which is on the same network, as uh, my landing pad and all the control units I can actually sell it now 
um, to this trader. So there's the water ice. I've got 48. Let's put 48 in there. That'll give me 72 credits. Click sell, and that's sold. And if I go back to the vending machine, it's gone. All that's left in there is the coal. So you need to be able to sell to your vendor, uh, to traders. You need a vending machine. I recommend getting a um, refrigerator vending machine attached to your landing pad. If I want to sell gases or yeah, gases, I also need to have a landing pad atmospherics. So I've been doing a bit of things, a few things offline. So let's just. I've got two of them here, and you need to begin with a. Yeah, let's start here. And output, output there. Tank, that's what I want. So the tank in the middle. So um, tank here, and then a. Oh no, I want that one over. A landing pad gas input. So I want it. So I've got my gases are all down here. So if I put that that way, I can bring the pipes up. Do I want it there? No, you know what? I am going to leave that there. Let me just move this, and I'll explain why in a moment. Do, do, do. Um, I think it's a wrench. No, it must be a screwdriver. Drill. Angle grinder. It's one of them. Right. Tank. Input. Output. So input with the pipes on the right hand side here. Connect it to my tank. Uh, this tank isn't finished. To finish building it, um, I need one tank kit, which I happen to have in my backpack. So that's now built. And as you see, they're all connected to the landing pad. That's connected to the landing pad and to that. And for this, I believe I need a volume pump, which I've also got. There we go. So the reason I've left a gap here is if you try to use different gases in here, they'll mix. If you want to sell gases to our friend here, they need to be pure gases. So I'm not. Ooh. So what I need to be able to do is purge the whole system. So I need some pumps on here once I get this all set up, so that I can actually purge the system. So once I sell some gas or bought some gas or what I want to do, I can then purge the system, get this all to a vacuum, there's nothing inside it, then I can change the gas that's inside. And that's the only way you can do that, otherwise it people can not touch anything. Um yeah, it's the only thing you can do. So you've got to you've got to do it some way so you can um purge the system. So otherwise you need lots of tanks for different gases and it gets confusing. Um so yeah, so that was just the other thing I want to show you. So that's the Gas input, gas storage, and I'll put the gas output on here. Not that I'm probably going to buy any gases from him. Or oh, any other traders come to that. What gas? What's he selling? He's selling H2O, uh, bulk water, liquid nitrogen, liquid oxygen, and volatiles. Um, so you pay, you want to charge you 200 for a canister. We only give you 7.5. Wow, that's a markup and a half. Oh, it's got 12 litres of water in it, I suppose. I suppose if you're desperate, yeah. What's that? Emergency water? Quantity one? So it's just a water bottle filled with water. Uh, so you can buy these gases. These gases, because they're in a container, when you buy them, will go into your vending machine. Let's just buy one of these. No, it didn't go in my inventory, so it must be in the vending machine. Yeah, it's gone in the vending machine. I think it goes in your backpack if you don't have a vending machine attached. Because um, obviously I bought seeds and things and it went straight in my backpack. Uh, but if you've got a vending machine attached, it'll go in the vending machine. So that water's now in the vending machine. I don't really need it, but there you go. Um, so yeah, so that's how to set up your um, trade with the trader, or your trade goods with the trader. 
Um, I will get this sorted out for the another episode, a future episode, so I can show it working. Um, so that's everything I've been doing, kind of, this session. Uh, one more thing I want to do is I've had my rocket up and mining away uh, for quite some time now. I need to just double check on how he's doing. How, oh, 25% power, time to bring him back, I think. So he's got 40, the quantity of salt 46. I'm looking at a small cargo here. And the quantity is 46. If it's not up here, by the way, to get it up here, if you want to bring things to the top here, you just find them, you click on the item, you find them in the list, and there's a quantity, and you click the little star, and that will move it to the top of the list like that. So you can see what's what's there. So this is just saying total import of, well, for now, 489. Uh, he's currently got 42 on board. That was the, the difference was what I had previously mined. Um, Sorry, he's currently got 47 on board. The 42 is from the previous mining trip. So um, let's just... How are we doing? Let that hit 4.7. Uh, and that'll be a full stack. Mining 15 ores a time at the moment. As you can see, Ed, I, I did the whole 1000% scanning on this period because I forgot about it. I set it running and I forgot about it. It came back panicking that my battery was flat. And thankfully it wasn't because I put the additional battery in there. Otherwise it would have been. Um, so yeah, so nearly there. 79, probably two more runs. And it will be, yeah, it'll give us 109-ish. Depending if that number goes down or not. So it's 4,700 ice. So go to idle. Rocket. Turn off the rocket miners. Rocket miner. Turn off the storage. Um, set location check our oh, small gas tank is pressurized Oop, hold on. nope gas tank that one is pressurized yep 50 kp megapascals uh, volume pumps currently off because that is 50 and turn the engine on And our rocket will now return back to Mars orbit. So let's just do that thing for the moment. Um, bits of need over there, so don't worry about them. So yeah, so these walls, these airlocks, like I say, there's another airlock out to my launch pad. Just so I can get in and out. Um, and there will be vents in here. I may just make this one manual because I don't really use it that often. Um... So I'll probably just uh, stick some manual pumps on here to use rather than trying to wire it all up. Um, but what I do need to do is just finish making the uh, airlock. I think it's plastic on this one. Yeah. So there we go. So things to be aware of a swell. I don't know if I've explained this in previous um, sessions. You have various pans. These are wall kits. These are wall kits. So I know these are wall kits on the floor because if I take the crowbar... I can lift them and there's the wall kit yeah that's the frame for the wall kit these do hold pressure obviously the grates don't hold pressure but these wall kits do so these wall kits you know, the windows and everything these are all hold pressure what doesn't hold pressure is cladding so let's go why have I got cladding just bear with me while I run all the way through my base it's getting a bit big this base So this is cladding, I believe. So uh, yeah, so you see the crowbar won't let me pick it up. Angle grinder will. So and there's no frame underneath. The cladding goes directly down onto the surface, as such. Um, and cladding, I've noticed that when you pick do cladding, let's pick these two up. Oh, no, I didn't want to do that. Okay, let me just put him there for a minute let's take this one cladding is colored and it'll stay colored in your backpack or in your hand put that down that doesn't matter about these being brown make sure Amy's not going to come and attack me again um, the walls um, let's pick a wall that's a different color have I got any walls that are different color let's just spray a wall a different color and make it easier Let's just pick this one. 
and show what I mean. So, walls, when you remove them, the material you put on them, so in this case the plastic, isn't coloured. It is the actual wall kit that's coloured. So that's where you get the colour from. When you see there's cladding on the outside of here, that's cladding, there's no frame. So just be aware, cladding isn't airtight. So um, don't put cladding on things and expect it to hold the air, it won't. It'll leak, it'll, it'll not do it. You need to have walls to make your base airtight. Right, now which frame do I want on here? Is that the right one? No, 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 that one. And then, that was the previous plastic, just use this one to just show it's a plastic. That's, it's not the plastic making it colour, um, it is the frame. So that was different plastic, and I'll just paint that white again just to match everything else. There we go. Um, Amy is miles away, way over there. I found a mass of uh, ore over that way, and I sent her off over there to start mining it. And she's, oops, wrong way. she's doing a good job, she's been bringing loads in. Yeah, 110 units away. So yeah, she's doing a good job. So yeah, there we are. That's, that sounds a lot. I've spent 15 minutes rabbiting on about what I've done previously, just showing you what I'm doing, what I've been doing. So uh, now we need to start um, completing some of these bits. So let's start with this. I will start with the um, upstairs. I need to seal this area off up here. Pull my lift down. Best thing ever, this lift. So my lift has a roof. That is a wall kit on there. There's a wall kit this side. There's a wall kit this side. Down there and on the back, I think I did it as well. So the lift should be sealed. Actually, no, let's just... Can I get to do that? yet? Yeah. yeah, that's all sealed with wall kits. Um, I'm going to send the trader away. Ooh, don't want to send the trader away. No, let's wait to get to nice and I'll sell some more water ice to him. Um, and then I'll send him away. So, in the meantime, what I want to do is... Where's my wall kit? I've only got one on me. No, there were 23 there. I want to... Stick a roof on this place. I'm going to put glass... On the top just to give me some light on this bit here um, I've done all that that's not glass I haven't put a frame around that yet just finished doing the glass so you might just take me quite well to print all this stuff um, that doesn't want to be glass that wants to be a wall Okay, so I think that's everything done. So now I need plastic. And I don't think I've got enough. Oh, I need steel for them. I've got various wall kits on the go here. I may have to want to sort them all out at some point to get it uh, all looking the same, but at the moment I'm just... I'm not too worried about the aesthetics of it. I just want to get it all sealed up. Let's that down. That. Any of this? Take plastic. No. This must all be steel. Ah. Ah. Spot the problem. So, I actually need to weld that up. Steel. Oh, I've got a plastic one there. Why well, this is really stupid? Oh, I'm out of plastic. That's why. Okay. Is that done? Not done. No, you all need to be plastic. I really should have checked this better and made sure that I had a bit more continuity in my walls. Right, 
set that glass in as I'm here. Let's put the glass in. And this is why I did a lot of this offline. You don't really want to sit and watch me doing this all for a whole session. So I've done the bulk of it offline. I'm just sort of finishing up some bits. And then we'd be looking at pressurising this. Um, and how then we control the pressure and the temperature. Um, is that any plastic or glass? Oh, steel, steel. Yeah, definitely steel. Need plastic for them. Um, so yeah, obviously this is a big volume now, a big volume to have to pressurise and then uh, get an atmosphere suitable for breathing in. So I don't intend to heat this area to 30 degrees like I've got my greenhouse. Ah, well I remember, talking about greenhouses. So I also, I think I said previously I was going to enclose this area. I've now built this out, like so. Um, I'm probably going to seal, well, we'll seal this bit here and here. Um, got the walls, let's just crack on with, I guess. That's a wall kit, yeah. Um, because I need a dark room to grow my mushrooms. So I will have to replace these two walls. Because mushrooms grow in the dark, obviously. On this side, I want those walls. Right, okay. I want these panel walls. You notice these are all the same up here. There's all these square ones. I did actually sort all the walls out up here. Um, so, yeah, so let's just quickly throw some. Is this steel or plastic? No, remember. Plastic. So, I need lots of plastic. Lots and lots of plastic. So this will be a dark room. Uh, we'll have water tank in here. I'll put a water tank in here uh, with some pipes, and then we we'll start growing some mushrooms in here. Um, mushrooms produce CO2 and consume oxygen, so we need to make sure there's plenty of oxygen supply in there. Um, what do I want? Plastic, plastic, plastic. Um, wall kits. I want one of those. And just between them is that's a wall, that's a flat wall, and I want plastic. Now have I got enough silicon? Um, yes. Amy's still mining away, she's not lost or stuck or... no, that's good. And I've got tons of cabling as well. I actually printed um, a lot of cabling, but I am going to need that to wire in my atmospheric units upstairs. I just want to get about 20, 30 of these. While that's printing, I'm actually going to go and get my rocket to land. Twenty-three percent battery. That's fine. Plenty of fuel. Location. Home. Set destination. Kind of a cautious chap, I'll just quick sa quickly save. 
shite. That's a flash over. Well, um, <laughs> turn up for the books. I've never been so grateful for doing a quick save. Um, I need to quickly go and do something. Um, I was get my lock, rocket to land and I had it landed and I was retrieving the gas and things. When um, I came down here and realised that my furnace was around about 600 megapascals. That's way, way, way above its burst limit. The only reason it's not bursting is because it's inside the sealed frame. But as you can see, we've got 502 megapascals here. Um, I need to close that valve. I'm going to start venting some of that gas, because I need to get that down, into that storage tank there. Um, let me just do that, get it going. Got to keep an eye on this pressure, because this pressure will go up rapidly. Um, yeah, what happened was, previously I noticed that I kept that valve open. I just vented the gas through my Stirling engine. Um, my Stirling engine exploded <laughs> because of the high pressure. Uh, all the volatiles, because there's quite a bit of volatile in here at the moment. Um, let's get under pressure there. Yeah, 355 mol. I'm just going to stop that now. Um, uh, volatiles then vented into the atmosphere around my base. That then ignited and caused a massive flashover. The flashover took out this printer, this printer, destroyed my airlock, destroyed this, um, put a big hole in the roof, and then all the gas from my greenhouse started leaking out this corner. And I spent about 20 minutes trying to seal the leak. I couldn't actually work out what it was coming out from, and all my plants started to die. So I thought, yeah, it's a, it lost cause at that point. There's just too much damage going on to be able to repair. So I did a quick uh, a reload from the point where I did the quick save for my rocket. So, because I still need my rocket to land, I'm going to go back up here. I'm not going to also do a lot of things I had uh, pre done previously. So let me just do that. Uh, open UI, location, oh, sorry, map, set destination, rocket. That's pressurised. Turn you on. And now I just let my rocket land itself. So yeah, um, this is why I need to keep an eye on things. <laughs> so yeah, it was this actually blew up, <laughs> and all this was gone. It was it was just yeah, big bang. Lots of damage. And I, I yeah, I mean couldn't get couldn't even get in and out of my um, greenhouse bit. I had to disconnect the doors and manually operate them, things like that. Now, I'm a bit worried that when I vent that gas again, a similar thing's going to happen. Um, currently, there's no volatiles in here. You know, we're, we're clear. I'm going in here because I know... Yeah, that's why I'm going in here, because I knew these batteries are just about to run out. So that one is flat. My one on my belt is very low. And my suit battery is also low. So yeah, um, I've had to reload. Ooh, stop you. I've got enough plastic, I think. Oh no, keep going. Any more? No, I've got enough. I've got enough, I think. Stop that, just eject it all. There's only two there, okay. Pick him up. Um, and then what didn't help was a storm came along. I'm hoping Amy's just mining and not stuck. Oh, yeah, there we go, moving again. Um, so, yeah, so I don't normally like to do reload, but I thought it prudent in this case. Obviously, this is a, if I was playing by myself, I would have tried to recover, but as this is a tutorial. I thought prudent reload. Um, I probably should have saved some of the video of the damage, but hey ho. Right, so what we've got in here 44.3 megapascals. So open. 
close. I'm going to try and be canny with this. There's my rocket coming back. How are you doing? 8 kilowatt. Wow! Wow! That's a lot of energy coming out of the Stirling engine. Which is good in one respect, it means that um, I'm getting lots of power for my batteries. I could do with a pressure gauge on that side of there. Let me just quickly print one of these. So that's the tank side of that valve. This is the Is that right? It's a tank that all bends into there, that bends into there. Let me just take this roof panel down, I just want to double check. Yeah, it's gotta be, it's gotta be there. And it goes up there. Round and round and round and up, yeah. And it's going down just up at about three megapascals, which was what the back pressure is on the valve on the other side of the Sterling engine. Yeah, we're down to one watt, where well, one kilowatt. Pressure's dropping off. I was dropping off right. Okay. Um, thinking about it, I could do with that display being down here. Hmm. Let me go and print an LED display. Uh, display. That's console. Console? I printed two because I'm also going to do something else. One new. Hydration critical. There. I'm going to use some of these uh, cans of uh, soup. I've, I made them, might as well use them. Um, I can make plenty more now. I don't have to destroy my bait. Oh, you see, here's the storm coming. This is what got me last time. Right. Close. Lock. I need to get Amy back. PDQ. Come back, Amy. You're a long way out. Way over there somewhere. There she is. Oh, yeah, she'll be back in plenty of time.
Um, yeah, that display. Take this plane out. I want to run a cable up there. Let's get my bearings, make sure I'm going the right place. I've already got a cable going down, I think. That's the top of that. It's hard to remember where everything is when you've got it all built up like this. There's my printer. I think it's that cable there I need to bring across. Oh no, that's my runway cable. Alright. Ah, okay, that's a cable there. Goes around there. But, ah, okay, because that's on the power network, yeah. That makes sense. So I need to bring that across and down here, okay. this all back up again. Actually I want that one to be fully sealed behind there so let me And you. Oh, here's a storm. Oh, 
hopefully Amy's back. Yeah. Shut the door. There we go. So that girl was running around. I replace that glass there now. Come on. There we go. Right, so that's that in. Turn you on. Got nothing attached to you at the moment. Let's go up. Also got a chip in this laptop. Air tank low. No. Uh, air tank low. Let's go sort that. Why are we losing pressure in here again? Um, as you can see, the pressure's going down this room again. It's down at 32 kilopascals. And I have absolutely no idea why. It all seems to be wanting to go at this corner. So, let me just... No, it's still going out. Where's it going? Have I blown a pipe somewhere? Is that the reason? But where? The only... Um. So yeah, not linked to anything. Now, um, you're not linked to anything, and the pressure is still dropping, still flowing into this corner. Why? Why, why, why? They're okay. Turn you off. Turn you off. In fact, I'll go so far as to disconnect you. Pressure's still dropping. You're disconnected. Pipes are okay. You're disconnected, pipes are okay. Potentially up there, I guess. Um, and we're disconnected. I am truly baffled. Right, what I've done to stabilise the temperature, uh, the pressure, but I don't know what it was that did it. 
So I don't think it was you. I've got to be quick or my plants are going to die. That? No. Was it that? No. The only leaves you. That's it. Right. So that has been controlled by logic. So that pump is on and expelling for some reason. Right, I need to um, get some more pressure back in here quickly so First things first, let me just go and sort that. It's going to plunge my base temperature down. Um, while I'm here. Yeah, so pressure efficiency is way down. So I need the pressure up 75. Okay, it's a temperature in here, 25. Again, this goes back to it's a big old area to heat to um, pressurize and heat. So the problem must be with you import. That helps. Single one we're talking about the, my um uh water ice Okay Oxy filter Nitro filter CO2 cents. So the CO2, what's the CO2 in here? Let's check that to begin with. It's pressure to 47. Hopefully nothing will die, but the temperature's down quite a bit. Um, CO2 in here is 4.97. So you're blowing out, being you should be sucking in. I think that's what the problem is. Vent out. So R5, what is R5? It's R0, read the pressure. If the pressure is greater than 75, so vent out on. Yeah, that just gets rid of the pressure. Um, so R6, 
if less than point 0.1, that's the if one's that's a calm dioxide radius, calm dioxide radius below 10%. Set R6 to on. So the problem I've got is I'm not setting the mode of the vent. Set vent vent in mode one. I think that should be it. If we look at that, it should be Oh no, still wrong, so I need to be mode zero. Oh I didn't export did I? Export. There we go, it's sucking gas in. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> so, the problem was, my programming didn't have um, that one line in it. So, what that mode does, it switches between these um, vents, either being vent in or vent out. Well, at least I solved that one. That's that was bugging me because that happened before uh, before my um, Sterling engine blew up. Um, that's that was fixed. If nothing else, that will stop it happening again. I can take all this crap down now. Whoa, 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 whoa. I need to replace the vent. Where was the pipe? There. Ooh, blow me away. Let's drop the temperature. That's okay, it doesn't matter. The temperature will come back up. How annoying. I spent about 20 minutes trying to find out what that was. It was only through actually spotting that that light was on that I realised what the issue was. This is how frustrating this game can be sometimes. Now imagine compounding that with your base, half your base being blown apart. That's what I was facing um, when I decided to reload. I'm not going to reload this time because I fixed it. I know what the issue is. I fixed it. It just goes to show, even though you think you know what's going on in your base all the time, that's not always the case. Right, you can go back on your base. Because you were doing a grand job. Even I could probably replace this with a proper atmospheric unit. Um, see the analyzer. Why have we got so much nitrous oxide in here? Oh, it's better. Because I was looking at the flipping thing that's why um so 1.43 nitrous oxide co2 is now 22 percent and climbing so that shouldn't be climbing set less than r7 what's r7 sorry r0 ah because the pressure is less than 70 it's still sucking air in right Once the pressure hits, hits 70, that will stop sucking air in. Actually guys, I think we'll leave it there for today. Yeah, it's been a bit of a weird one, this one. Sorry about that. These are the kind of things you do come across. You write these programs and suddenly you find there is an issue. And it can take a little while to sort it out. In this case, it was I forgot to send that to inward. I must have set it manually initially. Obviously I did it when it was on the side here, when I put it up the top. I, ch I didn't set it and it was set to output, so it was blown gas out. Now that means I need to check that that one is set to mode zero. So let's do that now actually. Uh, 
edit um, set vent out mode zero export okay so that's just setting the mode of both of those so let's make sure that one blows out that one sucks in and uh, what would you 63 temperatures low but like I said the temperature will come up I'm just hoping my cocoa plants don't die in the meantime I do have some seeds however how many have I got three seeds um, should be able to get another seed from there I think that's four seeds oh god I left my fridge open so good enough to replace them if need be let's just take that I don't lose that either Turn you on, put you in there, turn you on. Okay, disaster averted. Well, kind of. I cheated a little bit because I reloaded, but I think I can be forgiven for. Under the circumstances. I might stick a bit of footage of the, the fireball going on outside my base um, at the beginning of the video beginning of this video so you can just see what was happening it was quite um, spectacular right what we up to 69 nearly up to 70 and it's measured here so this point here there we go, it's now hovering around 70 and that'll be switching Waste on and off and uh, this will push it up probably is enough now to make it stay off right god as I said, bit of a different scenario this time, bit of a different uh, Result to the video. Why are you? Oh, you're exhausted. Okay, I've got another one here. So, how are we doing with the gas? That's exhausted. Yeah, it's going down. How much will the pipe? Where are you from? You are from... Nope, you're there. You're there, you're there. Don't know. You can stay in there, I don't need you. Right. You're sorted, storms passed, door can be opened, Amy can be let loose again. Is she damaged? No. Off you go. Um, my rocket should have returned. Let's go and check on my rocket now. How are you doing? Yeah, temperature's coming down, pressure's coming down. It's, um, oh, I've got to close this as well. See, I did all this. I've done all this <laughs> previously. Right, um, rocket. That's my next thing. Just make sure my rocket is charging up and getting more fuel. Yeah, fuel flowing into it. 41.942 I need to sort that flickering of them off and on um, we need to look at the cargo container it's got 48 in there um, as you can see we've got that is input count 90 export count 42 42 were the number of units I mined last time and we've got 48 this time which makes a 90 um, so I know that those are actually in the, the rocket 
Um, now I've got the umbilicals extended, I can go open, just click on it, type in one, hit enter, and turn it on. And I will now start exporting that, those um, ice all the way down to shoot, all the way down to my um, vending machine down here. It'll all come into here. How are we doing right here? Just while I'm looking, you can do some more. This should start coming into here in a moment. There we go. That's the stuff coming in from my rocket now. Okay guys, um, I'm going to leave it there for now. Uh, we will get this up and running in the next session. I will have to vent all this down. Um, heating wise, because this is a huge volume of uh, heat. Um, I'll not be heating to 30 degrees, I'll probably be heating it to about 20. I'll get away with 20. And I'm considering using um, phase change heating uh, with condensers and compressors, which is cheaper to run from an electrical point of view but it's more complex to set up because we rely on changing the gases and compressing the gases and expanding the gases and turning the gas into a liquid and then exheating it and turn it back into a gas in the process extracting heat from, or do the other way around or compress it the gas to a liquid which will release heat and then let it um, recondense and suck heat, heat in from outside or something like that. So we will do all that next time. We'll start looking at doing that. Maybe, well, maybe it's not next time. But in the next couple of videos, I will be looking at finishing sealing off my base completely. And how's Amy doing? Shelf mining? Yeah, she's way over the mining. And then setting up some phase change. I've kind of kept phase change out of it till the sort of end of this um, base. Purely because it's... Um, Quite difficult for people or new players to understand um, what we're talking about phase changes we're talking about um, when we look at these charts here uh, we've got pressure and temperature and then you have a solid a liquid and a gas I would have actually put this on now did they they never used to have that written in there um, so when they you know it, Anything below this temperature, it will be a, a solid, so a, a, um, ice in this case. Anything below this pressure, um, it will be a gas. And then for volatiles, it's got quite a steep curve here to be a liquid. So it, it, it doesn't stay a liquid much. It doesn't take much. You're going to go from a solid straight to a gas. So if the pressure is low enough, so if the pressure is below, what's that? 6.3 kilopascals. It will go straight from a solid into a gas. Um, above that, if the temperature is above 83 Kelvin, it will turn into a liquid. And that then it'll stay liquid as long as the temperature is below 191 Kelvin. Anywhere above 191 Kelvin, it will be a gas. And between that point and that point, there's obviously a liquid phase. And that's a phase change. And it's by controlling these, you can uh, extract uh, or output heat uh, with condensers and evaporators. Uh, and that's basically how your fridge works. Your home fridge, it has a, a gas, not volatiles, although volatile, you know, I think um, butane is quite a good gas to use, but it's obviously dangerous because it's highly flammable. Your fridge, if you notice you've got a heat exchanger on the back, you have a, like a big... Um, lattice of pipe work that gets warm, the compressor compresses it into a liquid, feeds it to the pipe in the back because as it compresses it heats it up. That liquid uh, then loses heat as it goes through the pipe work in the back of your fridge, then goes into your fridge and is allowed to turn back into a gas and in doing so it extracts heat from your fridge. And then that gas is then compressed again, heats it, turn it back into a liquid and heats up and that's how a fridge works basically. Just by uh, turning between liquid and gas, a uh, uh, substance between liquid and gas, and allowing heat to radiate away in the environment, and it sucks the heat out of your fridge. And that's what phase change is, basically, and that's what this is talking about. Um, solids can go straight from solid to a gas if the pressure is low enough. Water will do it in space, water can uh, 
go from a solid into a gas if they the, um, if it got enough energy going to it. So as it gets close to the sun, this is how you get comets and things. Uh, the ice on them as they get close to the sun. So the temperature gets too high for it to remain solid because the pressure is too low. It just sublimates straight away into a gas and takes particles of dust with it. That's why you get tails and things from comets. Anyway, I'm blabbering on. Thanks for watching, guys. Please hit the like and subscribe. Uh, if you've got any questions or any comments, please leave them below. I do have a Patreon page if you'd like to support me. If not, don't worry about it. Uh, this is Dragonfly Gamer wishing you good night.